Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator. I'm an old guy gaming, and it is September 1st. Uh, and we're going to cut our hay, and I got to thinking, you know, we should at least start off the episode with our inaugural mowing of our own big M450. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Um, I have... Um, I did the several fertilizer contracts earlier uh, this morning on September 1st. And so we're up to 48,886 uh, on the money there. Um, and we do need to repair this. So let's grab our toolkit here. And we want this in prime condition, 7,000 bucks, so that we get maximum harvest. All right, cool. So that's fully repaired and it's fully fueled. Let's get our, our lights on here. All right, man. I'm so happy that we have this now. So yeah, what do we have? We have like a 10 meter um, width, I think. Where's it at? Yeah, we have a 10 meter width and it goes 15 miles an hour while it's cutting hay, which is really fast. So we're going to be able to knock this thing out quickly. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. So normally I start here and make a, a little headland. We don't really need to make a headland, though, because I'm going to mow all of this. I don't think I'm going to have a worker do it. I mean, I could, but money's tight right now. Um, so I'm just trying to be a little more frugal. Okay, so let's fold this down. And we want to set it so it is in windrowing mode, which it is. All right. All right, man, let's cut some hay at 15 miles per hour. Oh, this is awesome. Get out of here, sign. I might even be able to actually pull some of that grass over there over. Just a little bit of it, anyway. Just by the jealous waves of the sea 
right, you guys, let's see. It is 11.21. I started at 10.51. I knocked out all three of my fields in 30 minutes. I, I haven't timed myself, uh, you know, prior to this, but I can guarantee you it took a lot more than 30 minutes <laughs> to cut the hay on all three of these fields. Uh, that was great, man. That was great. Nice and fast. Big swaths. You know, probably, you know, because of the width of this thing, uh, uh, you know, fewer swaths, too, uh, which basically just means the baneling's going to go uh, a little bit quicker, too. I love it. Absolutely love it. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get all this stuff bailed up and wrapped. Uh, we're, this is all for sale uh, silage. And then... Um, probably just finish out September and I'll bring you guys back on the 3rd with an update before we move on into October. Okay, so see you at the end of the month. Uh, we are going to just keep moving through the months. I really want to get to the end of the year uh, so we can sell our product and make a ton of money. Um, so unless I have a really compelling reason uh, to do a full uh, episode, when I say a full episode, I, I mean we actually I'm not just giving you updates. We're actually doing a full episode. I guess hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> uh, I want to just keep trucking to get to the end of the year so we get the money because I have plans, peeps. You know me. We have another big expansion coming up. Uh, but anyway, boy, the uh, the impulse by gods, devils, I don't know, <laughs> are tempting me, man. Look at this. Look at this. There's a T8 Genesis. This is the next, this is the large version of my medium version, New Holland Tracker. For 49% off, it's only, uh, no, sorry, yeah, 49% off. It's only 18 months old. It's practically brand new. Oh, I would love to have this tractor. Uh, but I would also put the 435 horse engine on it too, which is going to add another $42,000 to the price. Uh, but then I'm going to have to take out another almost $200,000 bank loan to get it. Oh, man, you guys. It is tempting. It really is. But I'm going to go the route of common sense. It does. It just doesn't make sense for us to get this right now. We could do it and we would be fine doing it. But I just, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't mind having this crone um, windrower either. It's about a meter longer than the one we have. But again, not necessary. And there's a forage wagon, which is something I'm going to be looking at later on down the road. But it's just, I don't know. I'm, I'm torn. I'm torn, to be honest with you, but we're not going to do it. We're going to stick to our guns. We're going to be frugal, and we're going to wait until we have the money because I don't want to keep relying on the bank. Uh, I mean, you know, the big M was just, there was no question that we were going to get this um, because, you know, our hay, our hay is, well, I don't know if it's still our main source of income, but it's definitely our second most important source of income. And, you know, we're going to have this for the whole rest of the playthrough. So that I I felt good about doing. But if I buy that tractor, I'm going to be like, eh, should I have done that? <laughs> you know, kind of thing. As much as it would be nice to have a third tractor with 435 horse. Um, so, yeah, we're not going to do it. Um, and hopefully I don't regret that. Okay, so let's see. Let's take a look at the ledger for the end of July. Uh, we haven't purchased anything this is uh, repairs. I, I ended up repairing my tractors. I had to do it. Uh, oh, and we repaired the big M too. Uh, so we, a lot of money went out in repairs this month. Uh, that's just the property maintenance. Again, my mysterious income that comes from production costs. I have no idea how, how or why that's happening. If you guys have commented on that um, or if you have any ideas on where that's coming from, definitely let me know. Uh, we made, uh, we grossed $23,972 from contracts. I think that was almost exclusively, uh, fertilizer contracts for this month. Uh, this is what we paid the workers. I employed some workers to help me roll at the end of the hay cutting and our loan interest is 288. Oh, we also have to pay our, our full-time worker, um, the $3,200, Okay, so we just paid them um, for moving our pallets into the warehouse. Let's take a look at that real quick. Um, oh, it looks like we're going to need to get the chickens some grain, too. I'll probably, they're good for another co couple of days, so I'll probably do that next month sometime. The uh, greenhouses are fine on water seeds, fertilizer, all that sort of thing. 
Um, so let's see here. We have, um, oh, I'm going to have some eggs that I need to move over to. But we currently have 112,727 liters of lettuce inside the warehouse. Now, don't forget, we still have a metric crap ton of these pallets in the cold storage, too. <coughs> uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we have at least that much in the cold storage. So you, this is, figure is closer to 200,000, if not higher. Boy, we're going to make some money, you guys. Uh, 25,676 tomatoes. And 50,709 strawberries, in addition to what is sitting in the cold storage. I haven't even looked in there lately. Let's take a look. In addition to all of those pallets, you guys. Wow. <laughs> That's why I want to get to January as quickly as possible so we can, so we can see how much money we're going to make. It's just going to be wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Um, all right. So yeah, we finished the hay. I have a little over three stacks, I think. Oh, actually, you know what? While we're running over here, let's take our, let's take our telly and uh, we'll grab some eggs too and bring them over here. For whatever reason, I don't understand. Um, farming simulator does not, um, automatically transfer animal products into production it, it, it'll do greenhouse products or other production products anything that's palletized um well no not anything that's palletized but if it's an animal product so if it's eggs if it's milk you know that sort of thing if it's wool it doesn't automatically distribute it i don't know why that's just the way the game works it's just there's probably some kind of a reason behind it but i'm not sure what that reason is all right we got one full pallet over here so let's grab that I have noticed an in, uh, an increase in egg production, uh, which is good uh, because, you know, we have, I guess it's because we have, um, you know, newer chickens. They're not as old. And we also got rid of the roosters, so we have a full complement of hens. So the egg production has picked up just a little more than from what it was. Oh, we should not be swinging these fragile... These fragile eggs. Eh, no break. Here, I'm trying to get it up so it'll stop swinging. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So anyway, I'll show you the yield from our third hay cutting. It was pretty impressive. Over three full stacks, guys. And of course, I have them sitting outside of the storage uh, waiting for them to ferment. And there they are. No, what am I saying? Over four full stacks. <laughs> Not three, four. Yeah, so we got four full stacks there, plus a few more over sitting in front of the thing. We did these on July 1st, so they're going to... Yeah, they're about 50, they're about half done. They're 58%. So sometime in August... Or no, not August, in October, I'll move them into storage. Because we we're going to do a fourth hay cutting. And the fourth hay cutting, which we'll do in um, November? Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to leave them sitting out. There's no point in putting them in storage because we're going to run them to market uh, a couple months later. So, yeah, it was a very, very profitable um, yield of, of hay for our third hay cutting. Really, really good. Okay, so let's go throw these in the warehouse. And then I think we're finished with September. Next month is October. It'll be the third hay cutting for the, for the farmers, uh, the computer farmers. Uh, I'll, we'll, I will be doing all of those as usual. I'm not planning on showing any of that on camera because you guys have seen me do it a million times. And, you know, maybe a, some cultivating and fertilizing, possibly sowing contracts might come up. We'll see. Uh, but the main, you know, source of income will be those hay contracts. And then let's see what else. Uh, yeah, we'll get, we'll feed the chickens next month. Top off their food. We got plenty of food for them. And... Otherwise, yeah, everything else seems to be going pretty good. I just want to get the, I want to get that loan paid up, paid back off as soon as possible. So I'm expecting to be able to, to pay it all off, or at least most of it off, at the end of October after doing those hay contracts. Whoops. Okay, 
Let's set these down. And they will be fed on into the warehouse. Okay, guys, that is it for September 3rd. I will bring you back with an update at the end of October. Unless I have a compelling reason to bring you back before then. See you in a month. All right, guys, uh, we are back. It's October 1st, and I bring you back a little earlier because uh, I want to show you a couple of things. We are, we, we've done a big, huge sunflower harvest, and we haven't done sunflowers in a while. So I thought I would uh, show you the very tail end of this for those of you who maybe ha haven't seen it. Um, but sunflower harvesting is similar to corn harvesting in terms of the header that you have to use. In fact, I think the headers are, or at least can be interchangeable. Um, and the main consumer of sunflowers is the oil mill. I don't think you, they're super profitable if you just buy them and sell them straight up. But if you have, you know, if you have an oil mill, which we might in the future, I don't know. I haven't really decided about the oil mill. Uh, there are other productions we are, uh, I'm planning on getting, but it's kind of neat. It definitely looks like sunflowers, doesn't it? <laughs> That's cool. Um, so yeah, I wanted to show you that. And I also have, um, I have some cotton um, contracts to do. And I have not done cotton at all on camera yet. I've done cotton off camera, um, but we're gonna, I'm gonna actually show you um, more footage from that since it, you know, it's the first time we've done it. But I'm not quite ready yet to do the cotton, so I'm gonna, you know, finish up the sunflowers here. I'm still working on my on the haying contracts. I finished all the cultivating contracts. I got one or two fertilizers to do. Um, and my plan is to to get all the rest of that stuff knocked out and then do the cotton at the end. And so I will bring you guys back at that point and show you uh, the cotton harvest, or at least parts of it, not the whole thing, of course. All right. So let's just finish out these uh, few remaining sunflowers here. Just let them just get that last little bit there. All right, that is it for the sunflower harvest. Where are you going, man? Oh, for goodness sakes. Okay, here. I also took a, oh, I guess the worker went home. <laughs> He's done. <laughs> I've had enough of this, he said. Um, I also took a couple of, that's it, yep, a couple of soybean contracts too, uh, but I just did those off camera. You guys have seen me do soybeans before. They're not really any different than any other grain. Uh, so we did those and um, yeah, so all right guys, yeah, I will bring you back when we're ready to do the cotton. See you in a bit. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, we have finally finished the hay, and I have almost two full trailer loads of silage um, that I get to keep. I was I was a little more careful this time uh, finishing out the quest. What I did was when I knew I was getting close, I dumped all the bales next to the load in point and then manually threw them in uh, until everything completed. You know, so I wasn't selling extra bales that I could keep because obviously we want to sell these in January. Uh, a full truckload of th these bales that you're looking at on this trailer is about $25,000 if I sell them in January, assuming the price is the same as it was the last time. So we have, I think we, if I count it right, I think we have another 23 bales on that other field, which basically means if we wait and sell these in January, we got almost $50,000 more. Um, you know, from the hay contract. And that was just for the third cutting. <laughs> you know, keep in mind, we've done the first and second cutting too. Um, so yeah, really happy with that for sure. So I just wanted to show you, you know, what we got from these. And we're going to get them all loaded into... These should already be silage, right? Because of this contract? Yeah. Uh, how close are you guys over here? You're 97%. All right, you're almost there. Fantastic. 
Uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's get these loaded in, and then we're gonna turn everything in except for the cotton quests. Or quests, I, I know I always say quests. Cotton contracts, and then we'll we'll do those here next. Load it up, baby. And we might completely fill this storage up before it's all said and done. I wouldn't be surprised because I mean we got to load all those bales over there. That's from our own hay. Cool. All right, let's go get those, what I think are 23 more bales, if I counted them correctly. All right, yep, that's it. 23 more bales. Fantastic. So here again, that's um, almost $50,000, uh, you know, that we will get if we sell, when we, I, I should say, when we sell these in January. Really, really good money. And we probably got more or less the same on the first and second cuttings. Well, no, we didn't because I ended up selling some of those. But yeah, from now on, what I'll do is when I get, when I'm getting really close to the contracts being done, I'll just dump them off next to the load area and then throw them in manually until they finish. So that way I'm not selling you know the extra bales that I get at a less than premium price so we will put these in the storage and then we'll turn in all the other contracts except for the cotton see where we are money wise and then go from there and probably later on today in on October 1st um, the these bales from our field will have fully fermented and then we can throw them in too. Actually, I wasn't. I was aiming towards the pile and not the load area. Okay, let's throw them in. Money, money, money. Love it. I really like this round bale storage too. It's way better than the other one. Okay, there we go. So let's see. We need to clean. Uh, we need to wash this trailer, this tractor, and then I need to fuel this tractor. Everything else, in terms of borrowed equipment that I've used on more than one job, I've already refueled and cleaned up. And they're all just staged, ready to turn back in over here in the yard. All that stuff right there. The red combine was for the soybeans. And it is really, really, really stuttery here. With all the stuff that's going on and all those pallets in the cold storage. But we won't have that problem next year because I'm not going to be putting pallets in cold storage or at least not as many as we did i might put a few in there just for the heck of it or i suppose we could use that for some other kind of storage but it seems kind of weird storing things in cold storage that is not produce so i don't know figure that out when the time comes i suppose okay looks like that anderson trailer is nice and clean the jcb is nice and clean I'm just actually going to drop this off here because we're going to turn in all of these quests anyways. Uh, contracts. Quests. Contracts. Okay. Let's establish something. If you hear me say quest, I really mean contract. <laughs> oh, boy. I sure like these JCB tractors. You know, you guys have heard me say that a million times, too. There is one issue with this tractor, though. And that is, you know, because it's... You know, it's got the dual steering uh, and, you know, the wheels kind of, the back wheels kind of stick out. If you turn really sharp, the back wheel rubs against the implement and it can cause some some turning issues. So that is one downside to them. But, man, they're just wonderful tractors otherwise, mostly because they're so fast. There was one other tractor in the game. I can't remember which what it was that could match the speed of the JCBs, but 
that's the only other tractor that I can think of that I've been in that was able to go that fast. I wish I would have remembered what it was, but I don't, so. All right, fantastic. So yeah, all of the equipment here is fully fueled back up, all nice and clean and ready to turn back in. So let's head on over here. Well, I guess we don't need to head over, over any in any place in particular, uh, but actually, you know what? I think this little John Deere will stay here because I think this actually goes with the cotton harvesting equipment. Um, and this is also a, um, a manual transmission tractor with multiple sets of gears, so it's interesting. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and turn these contracts in and get some get some cash. Uh, so, yeah, these are all the cotton contracts that we still have to do. Uh, but we'll start turning in all of the baling and the two harvesting contracts. Yep, that left this little guy. And we are sitting at $106,698. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, possum. Okay, what I'm going to do at the end of the day today, at the end of October 1, after we're finished with the cotton contracts, is I'm going to pay the loan back off, or at least most of it, so that way we're not getting charged interest any more, longer than we have to. Cool. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and do some cotton harvesting. This is, this is I think, I think this is the first time that I have done uh, cotton on camera for you guys. It's not the first time I've done it, uh, but the first time I've done it on camera. And, you know, there, there are probably a couple of you watching that have either never seen it or at least never seen me do it. Uh, so, yeah, it's cool. All right, now this tractor, if you look in the lower right-hand corner by my speedometer, uh, right below the gear shift icon, you'll see four. So this tractor has four gear sets. And so if I use this button here... Um, this is the low set, it, that's one, and then two, then three, then four, okay? And then if I shift, uh, rather than gear one, two, three, it's ABC, which is kind of interesting, and I can shift through the gears in that range. Um, but I've noticed that, you know, keeping it in four and starting off in about D or so um, seems to work pretty good for general running around with it. Now, I did have a problem earlier when I was actually using it, getting it to pop into reverse. Um, but, like, okay, right now, I'm hitting the reverse button and it's not going into reverse. Oh, you know what? I wonder if it's because... Hold on a sec. There we go. I was in the different set on my wheel. My, my Thrustmaster wheel has different sets of gears, too. And I was in the wrong set there, which then it was affecting this. So I'm glad I figured that out because I couldn't figure out at first why it wasn't going into reverse. Okay, so let's put that in neutral. And we're going to hook up the cotton pickup trailer thingamadoodle here. All right, now let's send the worker out to the field. Um, I think what we'll do is... Let's start with the small fields first. So this is 53 is going to be the smallest field. And then we'll end off on the big field, uh, which will be 31. Okay, so 53. Let's go ahead and send you out to 53. Um, which is, where is 53? There's 31. I think. Oh, there it is right there. Oh, it's it's not it's actually the one right next to our field. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh yeah, so you basically go ahead and just stage yourself right on my hay field right here. Have at it. And we will jump in the cotton harvester. All right, look at this monster, man. <laughs> this is cool. Look at OG sitting in there. He's ready to do some cotton, baby. Yes, siree. All right. These cotton machines are so dang expensive. Am I in your way? How in the heck am I in your way? Are you gonna go? Uh, I don't know what the AI is doing. 
let them they stopped okay whatever we'll we'll just come over and get it ourselves especially since it's just right next door careful don't be damaging that extremely expensive header on the ground there yeah look at this machine man this is so cool Gonna harvest some cotton. I'm not gonna give anything specific away, but I might, I'm gonna say that we might own one of these one day. Maybe, we'll see. I have plans and it might involve cotton. It might not, I don't know. And, and I literally don't know, um, I'm, th I'm contemplating it. So, yeah, there you go. All right, so let's get lined up here. And then we need to unfold this beast. It just creates a big, huge square bale is what this thing does. Look at that, man. That is so cool. All right, let's lower that down. Way cool. Okay, here we go. Um, so th I think, depending upon which harvester this is, I've only done this once or twice, so I'm not real familiar with how it works, but one of the harvesters I was on would fill up kind of like a, a pre-chamber, I guess, for lack of a better term. And you had to fill it up four times before it would actually make the bale. I don't know if this harvester is that way or not because I'm not seeing the second, what would be the second chamber on it. Um, but maybe it'll pop up, you know, once, once the, you know, the cotton gets completely full. So we'll just kind of see what happens. Look at this fancy schmancy thing, man. Can't even, can't really see the cotton inside there. Nice little display up on top there. I love it. I love it. All right, you guys. Well, hey, uh, let's do a little bit of time lapse, put some cool tunes on, and I hope you guys enjoy the cotton harvest. Let's go.